Yanni, Yanni's here. What's up, Yanni? Athlete or podcast? Um, dude, you're, uh, here's one of the and I was trying to explain to Joel before you jumped on. You're as big of a nerd about this stuff as I am in 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 every single way. So I looked over your left shoulder and I was like, "Is that a red light?" And you were like, "Yes, it is." And then we started talking about recovery and. You and Joel asked an awesome question. Like, do you notice it? Do you notice a change? And it's really hard because I was I always think the same way about vitamins. Do vitamins work? Well, I, I have to like slowly I have to cut them all out and then slowly reintroduce them one at a time. And who has time to do that? So so your answer was very honest in that like you made a lot of these lifestyle choices and changes all at the same time. What what does that look like in your so, you know, just some examples of things, right? I, I made a lot of adjustments to my diet in the last year. Um, we started doing some red light therapy stuff in the last couple of weeks or months. You know, spent a lot of time in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, a big thing is my supplement routine, we'll call it, is generally, you know, a fluid and changing thing, right? Depending on how close I am to a competition, how much I weigh, what we're trying to accomplish, you know, is depending on or it is affecting what kind of stuff I'm taking, right? So there's a lot of moving parts, but the one thing that, and you know, a lot of this is coming from Frank Pirelli and the guys at the training lab is the way I think about it is the goal for me is to remove as many external factors as possible. So it's just, you know, what, what can my wrestling skill do for me, right? And I think sometimes when you're doing that, it's easy to get caught up in the other things. And those things are really important, but what I've learned and it kind of took me until after final X to really understand it is that I need to put my trust in those guys, let those guys, you know, kind of guide me. And obviously, you know, there's going to be mental energy going to that, but I really need to focus as much as I can on perfecting my wrestling and trust, you know, Frank and, and coach Kyle and those guys on, on my diet strength training recovery, because they, they know it, you know what I mean? And I don't. So it's like, I'm learning, yeah, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm right. letting them kind of guide right. me. Mm-hmm. That's, that's interesting. Um, was there something that spurred you to give up control of that stuff? So <clears throat> I am a bit of a perfectionist in the sense that I, I want to know everything that I'm doing. I want to know everything about everything that I'm doing. I I want to, I want to be as, as knowledgeable about the things I care about as possible. And that's great. But if you look at the matches at final X, like I lost some wrestling positions and I think because I'm doing all these other things that are really helpful and they, they caused me to make these huge jumps. You know I mean? You can see at the world championships or at final X, you know, the year before I kind of put more into that than I need to, because I have these other guys that are really guiding me and, you know, keeping me on the right track with that. Whereas in practice, like, yes, my coaches are there, but it's not as, it's not as, um, if A and B, you know, I mean, there's some, there's some art to it. Wrestling is an art. So as much as, you know, Mike and Frank are giving me the information, giving me the moves, giving me the, Hey, you need to do this, this, and this, I need to also take it into my own hands. Right. So an example of that is I started videoing all of my live goes so that I can sit there and look at it. And then I'm watching it. And I'm like, hey, Frank, you know, what do you think of this? Hey, Mike, you know, what are your thoughts on me doing this here? Right. And and because that's something that I I get, you know, I mean, in the the other things I'm, I'm learning about, which is very good. And, and I want to continue to do that. But I need to continue to focus on the wrestling. Right. That's what I'm doing. And those other things are going to help me get get my body and my conditioning and my mind and, and, you know, all those things to the level that they need to get to, regardless of, of how much I learned about it. So I want to continue to learn about it, but I cannot let that learning process affect my time that I spend really being critical of my wrestling. Mm. How much can you, so when someone is not very good at wrestling, the ceiling that they have is very high. <clears throat> They, they they can improve because they're starting from a lower point. You are very good at wrestling. How much improvement 
do you think you can make by really focusing on specific positions let's just say in the next uh i mean nine and a half months yeah Yeah. nine and a half months you you knew exactly where i was going with that but yes you know yes before you try because when you when you look at my wrestling like i do know a lot but i feel like and i'm being critical and and it's good that i am i think a lot of what i'm doing is like 80 percent correct right where it's like i know and 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 it's like i know exactly how to shoot a single shoot a high crotch if you ask me to drill it i would and this is kind of what was really frustrating for me looking back on the final x matches and kind of talking with mike and frank is it's like i could tell you exactly what i'm supposed to do and i'm just not doing it which means there's some mental thing going on there and there's probably also just my technique isn't perfectly polished where it's like my brain understands but it's not totally ingrained here so a lot of the i think i can make up a lot of ground because it's like i'm i'm not doing anything perfect but i'm doing a lot of things really well you know what i mean so if we can start getting those things from really well to consistently world class instead of flashes of greatness like that's a lot that's a lot of improvement because i do have a lot of things that i do and I, if I, I just need to tighten everything up and tighten isn't necessarily the right word because some of it is you know getting in there and mixing it up but i i just need to um really focus on exactly how i want these things to go so that when i'm in those positions in a match there is no nowhere in my mind would i allow myself to do it any way other than good what are some things that you're doing on a daily basis to make those changes to say, I know I need to do X more consistently. Um, you know, how do you take that and translate that from, I know I need to do this and I'm not doing it to being able to do it consistently. Um, a combination of things, you know, I think videoing my workouts is really helpful because, and I, I think a lot of people, maybe not, I think some people experience this where, in my head, I know exactly what I'm trying to do and I have an image of it, but when I watch it, it's not exactly what I think I'm doing. Um, <laughs> and that's important. Man, I thought that, that single leg was gorgeous, but... <laughs> well, it's like, hold on, why didn't that work? That was exactly what I was trying to do. And then you go back and look at it and you're like, that actually wasn't what I was trying to do. It came out funny. I need to do this with my feet or you know, whatever. So I think just, and those are the kind of things like, you know, a coach can only have his eyes on one guy for so long. And that's why like, I can watch my vi- own videos as much as I want. So mm-hmm. I'm, um, and I think that is a really big difference maker. And then, you know, spending time with Mike and Frank of really just hammering, you know, the things that I need to work on. Right. So, you know, example is if the team is working on a certain position, instead of just kind of mindlessly doing what the coaches say, I'm taking it as, well, how can I apply this to what I need specifically? We're working on crackdown. I'm not just gonna work crackdown. What do I need from crackdown? What is it that I'm doing wrong? Let's just keep really hammering that, right? And I, and it, it, it sounds like not really a big difference, but no, there's a lot of no, there's a lot a of stages difference. within focus training where it's like, all right, I'm just doing what the coaches say. Okay, I'm gonna really work hard on what the coaches are telling me, but then I think there's another step of like, this is what they're telling me. How does this apply specifically to what I'm doing? And I think okay. that's what I need more of. You understand that you are right now, and, and <clears throat> I hate to be overly dramatic and grandiose about this, but that's the difference. What you're talking about right now is the difference between wrestling today and being being outstanding okay, at wrestling today as opposed to 20 years ago. Okay, There were a lot of athletes at, at a very high level that could get for lack of a better term could get away with simply going to practice and if the curriculum that was being taught fit into their their style then they got better but if it didn't well then they didn't right and so what we're and this is a conversation that i'm having with my athletes now it's not good enough it's not good enough to strength train because there was a time in the 80s and 90s where if you had a very good strength coach, you had a big step up. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. Everyone's got a good strength coach, right? Everyone understands like 
functional movement and they understand explosion and all this stuff. It's not good enough just to learn technique because it doesn't, everyone has a, a good club coach even as they're growing up now. And it's certainly even a mindset, right? Like if you had a mindset coach 10 years ago, you were ahead of the curve. Pretty much everyone, every high level athlete has it now. So what we're talking about is every high level athlete needs, if they really, really want to improve, they need to focalize their own technique, their own style of wrestling every day, every day. That's, that, that's a lot of onus to put on these young athletes. It's a lot, but if they want to be successful, that's what they have to do. Yeah. And, and I don't think it's necessarily like you're going against your coach. It's just, no. you know, how can I take this position and apply it to what I'm trying to accomplish? And that, yeah. that extra mental jump is difficult sometimes because it's easy to trust the guys that are helping you. And it's easy to just, this what I'm, this one being told this one I'm going to work on, I'm going to do it. But then it, you know, it's an extra level of, um, accountability to be like well what what am i doing wrong here let's just really work on that right now yeah it's not easy it's difficult because you got to be able to identify it too yeah good joey anything yeah are you are you using any sort of special cameras or tripods or anything like that as you record your practices and then kind of as part of that how are you reviewing that film and deciding like, Hey, I, I want to make this change. And, and then going back and implementing. No, I mean, I, I have my phone on a little tripod that Frank Pirelli gave me out of his locker and I just use that. And then, um, they're on my phone. I'll upload them to a, to a folder on my computer just so that I, I always have the room in my phone, but all like today, we, I actually just got out of a workout before this interview. We did some short live goes like I'll go home. I'll probably watch each live go somewhere in the two to five time range and just be like, what am I seeing here? You know, how's, how's my foot? Like, and every time it's like, you're looking for something different. How's my footwork? How's my positioning? How's my defense or offense or whatever I'm trying to accomplish in the go? You know, what did I do good? What did I do wrong? Right. And then sometimes you write it down. Sometimes you don't, it, you just kind of, you know, keep watching until you feel like you totally are like, all right, I, I got everything I need out of this. And then you just keep going through all those. But you'd be surprised. I'm I'm sure, I mean, I shouldn't speak for other people. When I watch myself, I can watch a 30-second go and see three or four things. And I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. But there are little things that I wouldn't have caught otherwise. And even if only one of them gets fixed, it's one more thing I would have fixed that I wouldn't have just because, you know, it, it, I just didn't get a chance to work on it in the workout or maybe a coach missed it because they were looking at another group. You know what I mean? So that kind of stuff is really valuable, right? If every workout I'm fixing one extra thing that I originally wasn't is a big difference maker. So as much as I can with that kind of stuff, you know, I'm going to do it. But yeah, it's just my phone on a little tripod and I just position it so I can catch everything. Um, let's, let's talk, you know, there's, <clears throat> when you, when you go about learning a new skill or, or um, learning a new position, is there are there steps that you take physically and mentally before you like really hone in on something? Yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> after Final X, ironically, I spent a lot of time with my single leg because if you look at so between the two matches, I think Nick Lee scored a total of like fifteen points. And I think like ten or eleven of them are all from my shots which is bad because that means theoretically I could have just sat there and done nothing and actually wrestled better, which is what we're trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, all right, well, let's look backwards. Like how, what, what went wrong? And a lot of things came down to just really basic stuff, getting my head up, getting a foot on the mat, not shooting to both knees, not getting extended, but the, the kind of undoing of that, right. Cause now it's like, these are habits I've had for a really long time. It's my single leg, you know I mean? Something I've done my whole life. It's like, all right, take your time. I, you know, like I didn't speed drill for a while. Cause it was just like, let's just focus on hitting it perfectly. And however fast you can do it perfectly is as fast as you're going to do it. And then in the live goes, it was like, all right, let's try to hit one perfect single leg today. And if you literally only take one shot, then I'll live with it, but it's gotta be good. 
right? And now it's been weeks. How do you, now how it's do like you judge? Back to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much wrestling normal again. But it was like this process of like, let's just really try to dial everything in because I know how to shoot a single leg. I'm just not doing it. So mm-hmm. let's really hammer in that muscle memory of like, you're only shooting it good. And if it's not good, you're out of there because that's like not where, that's not what we want to reinforce right now. I've always been able to kind of make it happen. How long, how long of a process was that? Let's let's just because we're it's ironic because at a very lower level, my son is having trouble clearing pies and getting to play. So we are like Fargo was a couple weeks ago. Since then, he had like five days off. Since then, it has been the slowest reps that he can possibly get, but they're perfect get into a single leg so how long did you slow the process down yeah i mean i i would say i don't know if there's a hard line number for me it was like a week or two of just like nope didn't like it nope that was and kind of like literally do a rep think about it do a rep that one was good do a rep that one was no right and over and over for probably a week or two and obviously I'm doing other things. It's not like I'm going in for two hours just shooting singles, right? There's other things that also need to be addressed, but the general, you know, it takes time. And, and I, I generally pick up things and make adjustments quickly and it still took me some time, you know what I mean? So I think for everyone, it's a little different. But the other thing that I'll say is there's a huge difference in my head between taking a natural movement, like for me, a single leg is a natural movement and just correcting it versus like developing something new developing something new takes time you know my uh, like i got underhooked a lot against the iranian at the, at the world championships and then you saw at the world cup it was better and like i pretty much sacrificed the match against gomez just working on not getting underhooked and right and, and that was all those weeks and he still got there and took me down so it's like it takes as long as it takes you know it could be a week could be a month could be six months but I just think mm-hmm. in general, sometimes, especially me, like I'm quick to be like, I'm not picking it up. It must be something on to the next thing because I generally pick things up so quickly, but some things just take time, you know? How do you, how do you go back through practice and determine if you're doing something perfect or not? Are you reviewing film in the middle of practice or is it something where you're like, this felt right? Is your coach standing over you? You know, it's it's a it's a combination of things, right? If we get a water break, like I'm gonna go and look at it and be like, how that look? That felt good. The other thing that I try to do is, and I, you know, if I'm drilling or if I'm wrestling live, I think I think that was good, and just kind of like, you know, not really thinking, just kind of like, oh, that was a nice one, and keep going, and then maybe when I'm done with the workout, I'm gonna look back and think, I really like the single I hit in the third go. Let's see how that looked, and if it looked good then it's like that connection is happening. And if it didn't, then I'm like, oh, hold on and work backwards again. Um, but, and, and, you know, obviously my coaches have eyes on me, so they're catching stuff. You know, if something, if something gets hit clean, I'm catching stuff, right? So there's always, there's a lot of opportunities between my camera, my coach's eyeballs, and what I'm feeling to catch the things that are going good and going poorly. So you're going to catch it. So it's just a matter of taking the time when there's time to sit there and look at it or drill it or talk about it or whatever it comes up. You, um, you, you did make some, some pretty interesting gains, um, after the world championships in my eyes. Um, and, and the underhook stuff that that's something that you want to continue to, to kind of, Del- delve into or or is this like a layer of an onion like okay we add the layer and then i um you know i know how to wrestle from overhooks or whatever um or is it something that you have to constantly kind of go back to you know i think it's something worth exploring because if you look at, at my weight the russian wrestles from underhook iranian wrestles from underhook mongolian wrestles from underhook those are all guys that theoretically could win the world championships that like don't do anything but under <laughs> Mm. So I, it's going to be something that will always be a recurring thing for me just to make sure I'm really, I'm really dynamite in there. And then on the flip end in the United States, like it's not something that guys do. So it's a good skill to develop, like being able to wrestle an under over wrestle from an underhook wrestle from over, you know I mean? Those are good skills to have. So, um, you know, it's not like 
I'm going to revolve my style around wrestling from under over because it's just not what I do. But it's a good skill to have to be able to be competitive with the, the foreigners and, you know, add something that the Americans are, are not comfortable with. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a dual advantage. Sure. What, what, were you, what were you doing after the World Championships to get more comfortable in there? Were you just force, forcing a spar position? Were you drilling stuff from there? Were you, like, forcing a, a live position there? It, it was a combination of things. You know, I think it started with and, – and the general process for me, I think, is, like, let's talk about what went wrong. Let's identify what I should be doing, and then let's try it, and then – you know, lather, rinse, repeat, right? So it was like, we started with just, let's get underhooked. Let's figure out how to get out of here or how I can score. Okay, this worked, this didn't. Let's try it live. Okay, this went wrong. Figure it out. You know I mean? That that process. And then we worked back. We're like, well, how can we keep this thing out? We can't just live in underhook the whole time, guys. You know, what can we do? And then it was like, well, what can we do to get something going ourselves? What, you know, how can I crack this guy open in a way where I'm getting on him, creating offense, not getting the, you know, glued under over the whole match, right? Mm -hmm. And that process takes time, right? And it was like we fixed it a little bit, you know, moved in the right direction for the Iranian. Mm -hmm. But then the Mongolians getting me in a different type of under over. So then it was like, well, let's talk about that position, play with it more, feel it, figure it out, you know, whatever. Um, I'm being kind of broad with it, I guess. No, but that's fine. That's fine. It's generally address what went wrong, come up with some solutions, try them out, see what happens, and back to address it, you know what I mean, and repeat, right? right? And you just keep doing that over and over and over until you're like, I feel really rock solid here. Mm -hmm. how, how important is it to have kind of a singular position that you're looking for. You know, you mentioned a lot of the, you know, Eastern Europeans and uh, have, you know, they're looking for an underhook and they're really great there. And you have to kind of game plan around that. Um, is it more valuable to be really great at a single position or be more well-rounded and have two or three or four different options that you're looking for? That is a, uh, I would almost argue a chicken or the egg philosophical thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at a guy like, David Taylor is a good example where like he's got his ankle picks, but he hits a lot of stuff. He hits his, he wrestles some underhook, some front head, some pick, some reshot. You know, sometimes he's in space, sometimes he's in a tie. He, he does a lot. It would his go-to shot is probably an ankle pick, but I'm sure you can find some matches where he doesn't hit a single ankle pick on somebody, right? Whereas a guy like Burroughs, like you know what's happening and you cannot stop it. Um, so I do think it's kind of a person to person thing, right? And you know, <clears throat> for me, I think it's, you know, on one hand, I have the knee pull and that works on guys, but guys are figuring that out. And I just think I'm not the kind of guy who's going to, you know, be like, I'm hitting this and you can't stop it. It's just not really how I learned how to wrestle. I was never really the kind of guy to be like hammering one thing the whole time. So I think for me, it's going to be a little bit more, you know, know my positions, know where I would like to be. And then it's like, be able to put you there in a lot of different ways, which is a little bit what, you know, those guys with the, with one dynamite move are doing. But I just think for me, it's like, all right, I want to get to your leg. I want to get to an underhook. I want to get to front head. Let's figure out what I can do to this guy specifically. And, you know, what? let's figure out what works for me where it's like, generally when I do this, I'm going to be able to get to here. Right. And the more things that I can ingrain is like one, two, three, four, five type of things, the better. And I just think that um, to make a long story short, I'm not going to be the kind of guy who's just like, I'm here and I'm there. And I'm always going to be living on a, a double, a single and under. It's just not really how I learned how to wrestle. And maybe, you know, we'll talk in two years and it, that answer will change. But right now, it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like that. I don't know that it's ever going to change for you, but but that but that's not to take away from the opposite end of the spectrum. I talked to Steve Neal about this all the time. All he would look like the entire match was spent trying to set up his double. Like literally, like he he just <clears throat> he would just find ways to go. Okay, this is not my position. This is not my position. This is not my position. Oop, there it is. Bang! And good luck stopping 
a Steve Neal <laughs> Yeah, and there's a level of discipline and focus. So, like, the, I would argue the advantage that, right, it, 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 it drills this habit of being incredibly disciplined because it's like there, there's probably a lot of opportunities to, to rush to other positions. It's like, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm here. And then the other end of it is, I mean, the obvious one, right, is like I have a great move <laughs> that you're not going to be able to stop. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. And some guys, it's like, this is my sword and I'm living and dying by it. And other guys, it's like, I have a bag of tricks and let's see what I come out with. And I, I think it's just kind of how, how your brain works, how you like to think about the sport and, you know, what what your skill set is like. Who's got the biggest bag of tricks out there right now? Like Sebuliev does a lot of cool stuff. It might be Taylor. Really, does like a lot. I don't know. I, that's the he's sneaky good from bit. short offense, man. He is sneaky good from short offense. Like he yeah. is and lots out. That, I feel like in general with the guys that win, like you can't shoot on them. No. You know what I'm, I mean? No. Like a guy like Taylor, like if you shoot, like you better take him down. And Sebuliev is like that. Kyle's definitely like that. Dave, like if you shoot on mm. him, he's gonna turn you upside down and put you in a garbage can. Burrow's going to reshoot you. Snyder's going to reshoot you. You know, there's just some um, being a good guy. Like, yeah. But I, you know, I guess going back, I don't know if there's one guy that's like, man, this guy does it all because the nature of the sport now is it's hard to do it all because everyone can defend it all. Mm. But mm. it's like everyone, something works on everybody. Sure. He's got to find yeah. what the something is for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who do you look to when you're you're looking for your technique and for your inspiration for for you know perfecting your wrestling? You know, growing up, I, I watched a lot of guys. You know, I um I watched Romanov, I watched the Satiev brothers, I watched Mava Batirov, I watched Ray Higuchi on that run he had at the Olympics. You know, I, I, I could name a hundred guys that I watched wrestling. Alexander Leipold, um, you know, there's a, there's a list of Americans that goes out the door. Right. But now I watch myself a lot because it's like, you know, I, I know, not like I know everything. I don't know everything, but I know, I know what I'm trying to do. And I kind of have an idea of what I, how I would like my moves to look. And you know, that's not to say when I was fixing my single, like I didn't watch a little Ray Higuchi and be like, well, what's he doing versus a guy like Sadulaya versus a guy like, you know, Joey McKenna. And look at those things and talk about how I can make them work for me. But I would say at the level that I'm at, it's important to understand what I'm doing. It's like the know thy enemy, know thyself, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. I, it's important to know what I'm doing and what that looks like and really understand that. So I try to watch a lot of my own practice and matches so that it's like, well, what, what, what am I really doing? Right. I know what I think I'm doing, but what am I actually, what's actually going on? You know, it looks a little different in front of you. Than it does in your head. Unfortunately it does. <laughs> otherwise it would be great. Otherwise I'm a world leader, man. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise I can't lose up here. I can't lose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to, to live there sometimes. Um, okay. <clears throat> question for you. All right, this is more of a fun question because I I I know that you'll enjoy it. Dream three man group in practice for half an hour. Ooh, so, like, like of all time or current? I think I I want to say of all time, but that might be a little bit too broad. But go ahead, let's just start there. We'll... If 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 I could make them like my size, like if I could get a hold of like Satiev, Luvaisar, or Adam, I actually don't even care which one, either of them, and a guy like Mavlad Batirov, like that would be really cool for me. If I could pick now, I mean, I would just pick the guys that, that are the best two at my weight. <laughs> You know, like I would love to get my hands on a guy like Sadulaev, but he's he's huge. But in theory, if he was shrunken down, you know, I guess to give you a, I, my brain is like rattling names right now. Um, I want I like to wrestle guys where 
Like a guy like Spadu, I have actually hit very good basic moves, but no one can really stop him. Like, I would like to be like, what is he doing to everybody? You know what I mean? Right. So it would be for different reasons, right? Like I can't imagine that's the, that would be the case with Buvasar, right? Like I mean, no, for him, I'm like, I gotta feel how you're hitting this on people because mm -hmm. it seems like I've never seen anyone do this before. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I I know exactly what you mean. Like there's a there's a a video of he and his brother sparring that I have probably watched three hundred times, you know, and it's just the most fluid thing. I've ever seen in my life and how he yeah, they're kind so of, good. they're so good. Both of them so freaking good. It's, it's unbelievable. And, um, you know, ever since you were a kid, you, you kind of lean toward that style, that fluid style of wrestling. Is it something that you did naturally or you just, you, was it was a conscious decision to be like, man, I, I want to be like, we you know, I think it's a combination of the way I was coached as a kid and, and again, just kind of how my brain works. So, you know, my dad, like my dad was my coach growing up and we thought like, you know, some people think like having an unstoppable thing is like the coolest thing. But for us, like we thought like being able to do everything was the coolest. So we were like, like not, and it's more than cool, but we were like that. Like, how can you beat that? I can do everything. You know what I mean? So that was kind of what led what led my dad to coach me that way. It was like, well, if I can get him to understand all these positions and do all these things. Like, he's going to be able to score, and he's going to be able to figure out how to keep you from scoring on him some way or another, right? And on the flip end, kind of going back to what we were talking about with the recovery stuff, the way I am, like, I like to know everything about the things I care about. So like for wrestling, like I want to know every position and every detail of every move ever hit that I could possibly hit once when I, you know, whatever. So because of that, I think my, and you know, again, it's a little chicken or the egg. Did my personality lead to that or did the way I was coached lead to me thinking about it that way? But I think those two factors really play a role in why i admire that wrestling so much because it is like that's how i would want to be i would want to be the guy who knew every position and could wrestle out of everything how do you kind of find you know when you're a kid it's lots of times hard to find every single position that's possible how how did you go about finding that information when you're you know don't have access to the same things that you do now yeah i mean there are a lot of different you know I, when I was older, like high, late high school, early college, I started learning the Russian alphabet so I could use like a keyboard because there's a lot more matches and practice videos that get posted in, in Russian. Um, you know, my dad, I was lucky enough that my dad would just sit there at his computer all day looking for matches to, so that he could be like, hey, watch this, type this in to find this guy wrestling and watch the match and let me know what you think about this move. You know, we had a lot of that going on. And then the other thing, I think there's a little bit of the mentality. Like, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, like, well, you just shouldn't be there. But we really tried to not do that. Now, obviously, there's certain times where it's like, yeah, man, like, you, you shouldn't have been there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But generally, it was like, well, what, what could we do if we were here was kind of our mm -hmm. approach. Like, guy got, like, a good example to think about is proper coaching would say, don't let a guy touch your legs. And we did that for sure, but it was also like, well, let's talk about what you would do if he got in. What would you do if you had your leg in there? What would you do if he got behind you? What would you do, you know, from all these different positions? And because of that, you know, between watching and kind of just like talking it out and playing it out when I got a little older, we were able to figure out or see kind of what the, maybe not the best, but a good course of action was, right? And then when I got to college and I was around these guys that were winning national titles, winning world titles, coaching guys that were doing it, then it was like, hey, you know, you're 90% you're here. You need to be doing this instead, right? And then it was like no longer were we just kind of figuring it out. We had somebody who understood it and then kind of helped me, like, get that last little bit. Mm. You brought up your first couple of years in college and – games it was pretty impressive um <clears throat> did you know you were gonna be a four-timer 
So I, I tell the story occasionally. Mike Gray had a talk with me at the end of the preseason in my freshman year. Maybe not even at the end. It might have been the beginning of preseason, my freshman year. And he's like, if the NCAA wrestling turn was wrestled today, and it was just a skills contest, no strength and conditioning, no mental, no conditioning, no whatever. He's like, you'd win. You're, I think you're the best wrestler in the weight. He's like, but if it was wrestled today, you'd probably take fifth. Maybe as low as not all American, you could best you do is like fourth or fifth. And I'm like, why? It just doesn't make any sense. If I'm the best guy, I just win. And he's like, because in college, there's more to it than that. You know, you got to be strong, got to be in shape, got to be mentally tough. You got to wrestle hard. You got to do all these things, right? Got to have good basics and hammer, you know, certain things, right? Got to, and, and strategy and all that. So, you know, we spent a lot of time my freshman year with like that kind of stuff. And then the wrestling, it was like, hey, so this went wrong. Okay, let's do this. Okay, it works. You know, keep going. Um, but, you know, I, I would have, I try not to say those kind of things because it's like count your chickens before they hatch. But I would have told you that I, I, I could have, you know what I mean? And I think everybody, everybody believes it. Like that. I agree. Um, and it's not braggadocious. It's just facts. Um, here's the thing, though. I think I, you as a freshman thinking that you should win four and then you your final season knocking on the door of four does it become more of a daunting thing less of a daunting thing how did you deal with the type of pressure that compounds uh, over time you know my senior year there was a lot of pressure from in the room stuff out of the room stuff you know and and um i think generally Everybody feels pressure, you know, and I used to say that I don't, and that was a lie. I, I just handled it well. Yeah. Um, and I just think when the time comes, you know, when you're in those really pressure situations, you kind of lean back on your skill. I remember I, this is actually something I, I learned in a class at Cornell. They did this study on experts, and they said people who are untrained perform better in low low pressure situations than they do in high pressure situations. So if I'm I'm not very good at tennis, I would play much better at tennis, just like me and my buddies, than I would in a crowd with people. Whereas experts actually perform better under pressure on average, because when you feel pressure, you revert back to what you know, and I'm an expert, so I know how to do this. Mm. And I, it kind of stuck with me, because I'm like, huh, so what is there to be nervous for? If anything, it's gonna, I'm gonna wrestle with it. So it's like, don't worry about it. But obviously pressure gets in, you get nervous, you get tight because there's more to it than just your performing, like your scalability, right? There's a, there's a mental and emotional side to it. And um, it definitely is a factor, right? But, you know, I, I'm lucky enough, I have people I can lean on and, and know me well enough to, you know, kind of help me out and make sure I'm, I'm in the right headspace when I need to be. What does that look like when 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 somebody I assume it's Mike comes up to you sees that you're tight? Um, what does it look like to to talk you off those ledges? You know, it, it um, it's a it's a situational thing. You know, if I'm not wrestling for a little bit, it's kind of like we're talking about something completely unrelated, making jokes. Maybe we're talking about a match of some other guy that happened. Like, hey, did you see this? That was crazy. Right, and then when it's go time, or we're getting close to it, it's like everything closes in. It's focused on this. Like you're the man. Let's one track mine right now. Just this, and um, you know, it's just you know, I've known Mike for a really long time now, and when you know someone long enough, they, they it's the phrase like you stare into the abyss long enough, the abyss stares into you. It's like I've known Mike long enough that he knows exactly what I need and what. I look like when I'm wrestling good, how I feel and what, at least what it looks like to him, you know? So to say that there's like a thing that's like, when I do this, I'm on, it's not true. And which actually is something I've been working on with some uh, sports psychology kind of stuff. But nonetheless, um, you know, he just, when you have someone who's coached you as long as Mike's coached me, he just kind of knows what I need or what 
state I need to be in to be ready to go. And he's going to do his best to help me kind of get myself there. Along the lines of kind of dealing with pressure, what was it like kind of, you know, being going into your senior season and kind of losing a match earlier in the year and still, you know, keeping the same goal and keeping the same focus of I'm going to be a four timer. Um, you know, did your mindset change at all in dealing with, uh, you know, that loss earlier in the season? You know, <laughs> it's um, one of those things where I think it's a cliche to be like, that loss is the best thing that ever happened to me, right? Because the best thing would be to not lose. <laughs> but like, I do think that it, it did some things for me. You know, I think I was really, you know, the way that I, I was really upset with myself about the world final, like I wrestled this good tournament and then the Iranian beat me in a match. And I was so, I was so upset with myself that, and I spent so much time. I was so obsessed with that, that, you know, the, the, the early loss in the year kind of was like knocking back and they're like, Hey, let's, let's focus on this a little bit. You know what I mean? And then building on that, I, I wrestled a lot better at the world cup against the Iranian and it was like weight off my shoulders. Like, okay. I, I am right there. You know I mean? He's not, I got, you know, I, I think there was a lot of pressure on myself because I was so disappointed in how the world final looked. And I was so worried about that, that had I not taken that early loss, I might've just continued to really address that and not really address the folk style stuff until the end of the year. And then who knows how late it is and what the other guys are doing to get ready for me. Right. Mm. Because that kind of, it was that kind of situation where, you know, they're all training to beat me and I, I'm, you know, head in the clouds worried about it. a guy from Iran. And um, so, I think the so in, kind of brought me back. Kind of where like, you hey, back to let's, reality. Let's worry about what's right in front of you. Like, let's spend a moment in the here and now. Let's spend time in the here and now and just hmm. address the, the next thing is the NCAA tournament. Let's, let's address that. Wow. That's interesting. Because it's easy, I guess, to look past it when you not lost at that tournament um right so yeah i never really thought about it in those terms that's that's really interesting and um, it's not like it's not like i thought i was going to walk through it because that's not true it was just like well if i'm worried about beating the iranian like that's going to help me beat these guys too but it's different mm -hmm. it's a different style it's a different sport different guys you know different weight class like all those things matter and i think um it's easy to kind of write it off because it's like, you just made the world finals worry about that. Like who cares about the NCAA tournament? Like world championship matters way more, but like the NCAA tournament's tough and it's a different type of tournament, different style, different, every, everything's different. You know what I mean? So you gotta be ready for that. Uh, you mentioned kind of when you were younger that you would just say you didn't feel pressure. And now as you've gotten older, you kind of, you know, have changed your view on that. Do you think that recognizing the fact that you did feel pressure helps you address it in different ways as just, you know, saying that it doesn't Im impact you? Yeah. You know, I, I, anytime that you have the opportunity to stop lying to yourself is good. Right. And I was lying to myself about that and just saying that I don't feel pressure because I did a good job handling it, you know, in my own way, but as you get older and the things you're doing matter more, the pressure builds. Right. And, whatever. So I think, you know, just being like, yeah, I, I do get nervous and, and these things are really important to me and that's why I'm getting nervous. And, you know, there's some things that I need to do to, to make sure I'm always ready to go. And it's not even nervous. It's just like, I'm getting ready to do this thing. That's really important to me. I, and I, I, I'm taking it really seriously, but you know, I guess, yeah, addressing it, addressing it is good because you're not lying to yourself and you shouldn't lie to yourself is the simple answer there that's great because it's it sounds like duh but it's it needs to be addressed it's hard to accept I, that yeah yeah that's all right all right one more fun question if you had a magic wand and you could choose one thing about the sport of wrestling what would it be um <clears throat> folk style or freestyle or just one thing in general one thing one thing that you think would make the biggest impact all across the board? Um, I would get 
I, uh, I'd probably get a TV channel or something like that where more people can casually run into wrestling. Mm. Because it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky because we don't package it well. We don't package huh? it well. It's tricky no. because we don't package it well. Because I think like I there's not a lot of people I've met who have gone to a match and not enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I've met a lot of one people who have gone to one and then gone to another one. Mm -hmm. So it's just like if we could get it in front of people's faces and they'll enjoy it. But I mean, well, what, what, what does that look like though, Jan? Does it, does it, are you saying dual meat? Are you saying a, it's a dual one? Meat. Ooh, okay. here's a better way to say it. Here's a more, a more specific answer. There should be an NCAA dual meat championships on ESPN. Because now, like, the other, the toughest part about the NCAA tournament is that if someone wants to watch a Cornell wrestler, they have to generally have an eye on their phone for three days straight. Uh -huh. And then either know the, all the platforms well enough to catch it, or they have to sit there and hope that they are looking at their phone when the Cornell guy steps on the mat. But with Just a dual meet, I could be like, hey, we're wrestling Minnesota at 3 o'clock. Eastern time. That's when it's starting. Mm -hmm. You're going to watch 10 Cornell guys wrestle in a row, and then we're not going to wrestle again until 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And that is like boom, boom, boom. And I think dual meets are fun because, you know, crazy things can happen. And what's cool about a dual meet is like at a tournament, I can kind of heroically lose and it doesn't really matter. But in a dual meet, like if I have a guy who's not very good, but competing as a really good guy and he's saving a team point, like he only gets decisioned and then the guy at 41 gets a major, like that is something where the guy who lost, like won for his team in a way. Sure. So sure. It, it's a good way, I think, to have it be like everyone's in every match because that means, because a better way to say is I get a tournament, like, yes, I can pin you at any moment, but if a guy's beating you by nine points, like, okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's <laughs> what are the odds you steal that one? But yeah. I can maybe get a takedown and lose by seven and save my team a team point, and that's, like, something we can be happy about. Mm -hmm. so I think and, – and on top of that, right, like, the pins, Matt, the pins are huge. Like, we, we, like we had a match against UPenn, and we got the president of our university to come. And it was like the place is jumping, everyone's screaming and yelling, banging on the floor. Like, that's a good atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And the more people you can expose to an atmosphere like that, I think the more people will be drawn to it. And then you create more fans through viewership that way. I couldn't but that's more. a lot of, there's a lot of ifs and, and requirements for that. Which there's I really, there's, there's not, from what I understand, there's not a lot of ifs. We've had, so we've had some semblance of a college national dual meet title. Yeah, we said the national duels was awesome. It was awesome, but not everyone participated. And when it when it's not the top teams in the country participating, then it's not a national championship. It's not a national championship. So we all have to kind of agree that that is the best way to package this sport. Because truth be told, our sport is so great. And it's, but it's just all, it's never, the consideration is never put the viewer ever, 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 ever. It is always uh, to accommodate the athlete, to accommodate the coach, to accommodate the institution. We have to start thinking about people watching this. Well, at least yeah, considering and, it. Yeah. And that's, you know, and like you made a good point, like accommodating to the athlete or the coach, like it's tough because right. It's like, as an athlete, you complain when things aren't how you want them, but you also complain that people aren't watching you. And I'm not saying that they're mutually exclusive, but if you want to in increase the enjoyment of the viewer, you have to take it from something. Mm -hmm. Or you just have to like, make more money up here, but that's not really an option. Sometimes. I mean, it, it, well, it, it is an option, but it's not sustainable. Right. Yeah. Like we, we can, we can, it's an option to go, Hey, we need this kind of money to put towards 
whatever product we're producing. But that that handout mentality is just it has to pay back at some point. There's no ROI at all in our sport. So anyway, all right. Um let's let's wrap this Let me, up. You got something? Yeah, one one more quick question on pressure. You mentioned like acknowledging that you feel nervous. Has there ever been a time where you don't feel nervous before competing? Yeah, of course. You know, and this is what I would argue like the zone is that you always hear about in sports where it's like everything's in slow motion, everything's clicking, where it's like, man, I feel like I could I could wrestle a, a bear right now. I could I could do anything. You know what I mean? And and that's the goal, right? Where you and I'm not saying that you weren't nervous five seconds before you hit that. You know what I mean? But it's like that's the goal with when we talk about getting into a, the right state of mind when you compete, is it's like how can I always get it where it's like I'm out there and I feel great because you can, it's not like you don't, you know what I mean? And, and, um, I guess, yeah, there's times where I've felt pressure taking the right approach to it. And then it's like, Ooh, I feel great. And there's times where you feel pressure and then you, you, you wrestle and you may or may not wrestle as good as you like. Sometimes you still do wrestle. Well, you kind of like snap and do it and go, or you don't, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I I would argue anybody could tell you about a time where they're like, man, I was just on it. And I, I would imagine what they're experiencing is that like clarity of mind where it's like everything's clicking and they feel like they're on top of the world. At least that's how it feels for me. Is that same thing, like the moment you step on the mat, like you're not feeling nerves at all? Or is that more so like once you get into the action, you're like, oh, I'm in the zone now? Generally, it's when you walk out there, like there's this moment where you're like, the problem is... <laughs> to my understanding, it's like when it's happening, you don't realize it until afterwards. You're like, man, that was good. Mm -hmm. Because part of it is like you're you're in this unconscious, empty headed state of like everything's just happening and I'm I'm making it happen. And the unconscious part means that you're not even really aware that that's how you're feeling until afterwards. You're like, wow. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Almost like you're. So, uh, I can you like put yourself in a trance a little. Yeah, no, and then when you look back on it, it's like watching a movie. Like, yeah. like when you think back on it, you're like, "Oh, it was that was me doing that? Oh, that's pretty cool, right?" Like, <clears throat> that's a really cool place to be. Yeah, for a sure. really cool place to be. All right, um, honey, how do people get a hold of you? How do they see you? How do they talk to you? Are they. So I um I have an Instagram and a Twitter. My Instagram is Yanni Diaco underscore LGR. My Twitter is Yanni D underscore LGR. Um, you know, that's really it. I, um, you know, I, I could talk about my sponsors if you want, but, you know, generally, I, I, you know, talk about Spartan, them, man. Spartan, Spartan does really a good job. Shirt. Like Spartan Combat it is huge for me. You know, I, I, I could make a whole list of people, right? Like live trained as technique videos of me. Um, but generally, like, you know, those are my social media handles. And if you wanted to get in contact with me, those are great. Um, you know, and, and I just want to say, I get a lot of support. Generally, I, I feel, um, appreciated and respected among people. So I, I just want to say thank you for that. You know, I, wh whether or not that's necessarily true, um, that's true. No, it feels true. that way. So I just want to say thank you to people who are kind of in my corner. It's pretty dope. Man. Also, thank by you so shoots. much. Yeah, yeah get your shoes. Sweet. Buying the shoes to be sweet. I had them on. They're nice. Um, I hope you guys like them if you've already gotten a pair. So, yeah. They're very Buy Euro. Shoes. Buy very shoes. Very Euro. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jan. It was great catching up with you, brother. Thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate it. No, thank you, guys.